Hello, this is Mr. Philippeck, and today's video is on Punnett Square 101. And we'd like to know about Punnett Squares, and Mendel really relied on Punnett Squares to accurately predict uh, what trades could be feasibly passed on from one generation to another. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what is a Punnett Square? Well, as you can see here, it's just a, basically a box with four different quadrants. And on the outside, we're going to put the products of meiosis, or in other words, uh, the gametes. Okay, remember that we receive one trait from mom and one trait from dad. And so let's say that we have, uh, you know, a big B for brown eyes and a little B from blue eyes. Well, if this is our genotype or the uh, alleles or traits that we've inherited, we're going to get one from mom and one from dad. But during meiosis, you know, during meiosis here, these genes are going to be split apart. And we need to place those genes on the outside of this square. Because on the outside of the square is where our gametes are going to go. On the inside of the square are the results of fertilization. And fertilization are all the potential combinations between two parents that could exist. And the best way, I think, to look at this is through the use of an example. Let's say we have a key here where we're going to use big T equals tall and little t equals short. And we want to cross these two parents. A parent that is homozygous tall, let's say for plants, and another one that is heterozygous tall. Well, if you remember, homozygous tall means that the letters are the same. So we take a look at our key here, and that means we're going to have the genotype here is going to be big T, big T. But during meiosis, those alleles are going to be split in half, and so we're going to represent that across the top here by writing a big T in this column and a big T in that column. Well, the other one here is heterozygous tall, and the genotype here would be one big T and one little t, because as you might remember, heterozygous means different or hybrid, and so we get one dominant trait and we get one recessive trait, and so we need to show that uh, here on the outside. So we have big T, little t. And then we're going to play, well, I like to call it battleship. But basically, we're going to combine uh, these different columns. So here, uh, in this first box here, we're going to put a big T from up here. And then uh, a big T from over here. And so the genotype of this potential offspring would be big T, big T, and what we'd say homozygous tall. We're going to keep doing the same thing here uh, as we keep going. So this is big T here and big T there, uh, and then we keep going here, and if you notice, for this one here, we're going to write um, the lowercase letter second. And it's just kind of what an accepted practice with regard to genetics. And so here we'd have a, still a tall plant, but this plant would be heterozygous. So if you go ahead and just kind of fill out the rest of the chart here, here's a big T, and again here's little t. And so basically the, what we have in here are all the potential uh, combinations of fertilization between a homozygous tall and a heterozygous tall individual. And if you notice, we can't get any, we can't get any short plants because the only way to get a short plant would be to have the genotype little t, little t. And we don't see any of that here, all four of these. So we have a four out of four probability of getting a tall plant. What I think would be helpful here is to go over the five steps of solving any genetics problem. I've kind of worked these up. It's kind of a checklist for students to go through in order to solve any type of genetics problem. And if you follow these steps, I think you'll find a lot more success in solving any type of genetics problem that could happen. And so here I have just an example of a Punnett square. And the first thing here is we want to write a key. Well, typically in the problem, they'll tell us that either uh, one trait is dominant over another. So in this case here, um, we would write here that big T, let's just say, equals tall, and little t equals short. All right, and that's as simple as what a, what a key is, just to tell us what each of these letters represent. So what does this big T represent versus what does this little t represent? The second step here is to talk about the genotypes of the parents, or what are those combinations of letters that our parents have. And typically we write that down, like, you know, parent one will equal something here, parent two will equal uh, something else. And where do we find that information? That will be given to us in the problem. So if you look at this example here, 
uh, we see that one pair in here is big T little t and the other pair in here is big T little t so we you know just to kind of work this out this is what the genotypes of the parents would be now the third step here is to work out this Punnett square you know to, to you know literally draw out the square you know and here I already have the example here but you just draw out the square and then write down the products of meiosis on the outside and then work on the probabilities of all the different potential uh, fertilization combinations that are inside and then the fourth thing I always tell my students to do is to work out both the genotypic and phenotypic ratios because once you've worked those out you're going to be able to answer any sort of question that could uh, possibly be asked and so in terms of genotypic ratio we need to write down all the potential genotypes or combination of letters that we see in the Punnett square so here I see one we have a big T big T and I'll separate it by a colon and then we have a big T little t and then the last one here we have little t little t and then right underneath all we need to do is write down how many of each genotype we have so we have one big T big T right here uh, we have two big T little t's and then we have uh, one little t little t and so what we'd say here is we have a one to two to one ratio genotypically um, for this potential mating now the difference between genotypic and phenotypic if you might remember is that phenotypes are the physical appearance of what something looked like so we're not going to necessarily write the letter combination we're going to take a look at the difference between tall and short and so all we need to do is count up the number of tall and remember to get a tall plant all we need to do is inherit just one of these dominant traits and so it looks like we have one two three tall plants to one short plant and these two numbers should always equal four if you have a four Punnett square um, these numbers should equal 16 uh, if you have a 16 square Punnett square which we'll talk about later in dihybrid crosses and so you can see that the phenotypic ratio is three to one whereas the genotypic ratio is one to two to one well we can also flip these ratios in the probabilities and I could say, well, what is the probability of getting a homozygous tall plant? Well, we could just take a look here, and we have one out of four. So we would say that the um, probability of getting something that's big T, big T is one out of four. All right, and we can keep going on and on and on. We can say, what's the probability of just getting any kind of tall plant? That would be three out of four. And so the reason why I always tell my students to save answering the question for last is because that once you work out all the genotypic and phenotypic ratios, um, there's not too many things that you can get tricked on. Well, now I thought it'd be good to go over a practice problem. And again, I'll, I'll put our little cheat sheet up here, and we're going to go through these five steps and use this example. Well, an example here, we're going to take a look at pod color. And it's already given us a cross here. And the first thing here is we want to write a key. And it's been pretty much done for us here. So big G is going to equal green. And little g is going to equal yellow. The second thing we need to do is kind of come up with the genotypes of the parents. And that's pretty much been done for us too here. We'll just call this one parent 1. And we'll call this one parent 2. And again, if we were reading a word problem, it would give us this information within the problem. Well, the third step here is to work out the Punnett square. Well, remember, we have to, you know, split these, uh, you know, alleles apart. And so we're going to put a big G and a little g here, a big G and a little g here, and then on the inside here, work it out. So in this first box, we're going to have big G, big G. Second box, big G, little g. Third box here. And the fourth box is here. Well, now it asks us for the genotypic and phenotypic ratios. So again, what uh, I always have my students do is let's just write down all the genotypes we see. So again, we have big G, big G. We have big G, little g. And we have little g, little g here. And I'll just kind of fill out the colons here. And again, you see that familiar ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. And that's typically what you're going to find anytime you cross two heterozygous parents. Well, the phenotypic ratio would be uh, green versus yellow and we would have a phenotypic ratio of let's say three to one and so again if I asked you for the probability of getting a yellow plant or a yellow pod you would tell me that probability is one over four 
because we have one possibility here over four total chances. Let's take a look at another problem where the things aren't really worked out for us here. And the problem says, cross a heterozygous tall plant with a short plant. And then what are the probabilities of getting a short plant? Well, when I'm first reading this problem, I am probably going to stop reading right about here. Because once I know what the parents are, um, and it gives me enough information to kind of get the party started, uh, I'm not even going to worry about what they're asking here until the fifth step. So the first step here is to write a key. Well, it says cross a heterozygous tall with a short plant. Well, if you notice here, tall is underlined. And that's a pretty common, accepted way to show which one is a dominant trait. So again here, we would say big T equals tall, because we always typically want to use the capital letter of the dominant trait for our allele, and little t equals short. Well then, the next thing is the genotypes of the parents. Well here, you know, typically what I do is just the first parent I come across, that's going to be parent one. And so parent one here is going to be heterozygous, so again that's a hybrid, so we have a big T, little t. And then the second parent here is going to be a short plant. And the only way to get a short plant is to inherit both recessive alleles. So they're going to be little t, little t. Well, then I'm going to come over here to my Punnett square and work out the problem. So here I have a big T and a little t. Here I have little t, little t. And then I'm going to fill out everything I see here. And again, the more practice you get, uh, the faster this is going to become. Well, the fourth step here is to work out the genotypic and phenotypic ratios. And it looks like here we only have two uh, genotypes here. We have big T, and big T, little t, and little t, little t. And it looks like it's two to two, or some people might say one to one. And as far as the phenotypes, again, we have tall versus short. So I'll kind of work that. I'll just kind of draw a line here. Tall versus short. And again, we have two to two. And so in this example here, uh, we see that the genotypic and phenotypic ratios are actually the same. Well now the fifth step here says to answer the question. Well it says what are the probabilities of getting a short plant? Well again since we already have this worked out um, we have the probability here to get two short plants out of a possibility of four but every good math student knows we're going to reduce that down to one half or we have a 50 percent chance of getting a short plant using this combination. Well, I hope this gave you a little insight on how to use Punnett squares and what Punnett squares are all about. And I hope that gives you help to master all of your types of genetics problems. The key to genetics is you must practice. So practice, practice, practice. And as always, thanks for listening.